But remember the prodigal son, he came, oh man, he felt unworthy to be a son. He wanted to be a what? Servant. A servant. But then the father wouldn't accept that. The father just ran to him and hugged him. And the prodigal son would be very, very dirty and smelly. Imagine that he fed the pigs. And then he had to walk so long distance, so he would be all sweaty and, you know, the smell of pigs. Have you smelled the smell of pigs? <laughs> you can smell that half a mile away, you know. I have <laughs> and he smelled so bad when, it, when he ran over to his, I actually, he didn't run over. It's, he's, he must have been just stood there. He just stood there and, because he felt unworthy. And he couldn't believe his eyes when his father ran to him. But his father ran up and his father <coughs> could have smelled the smell of pig stew. But he didn't mind it. And he just hugged him and kissed him. Wow. <laughs> really his strong smell. But the father didn't mind because he was so happy the son came back. You know, our heavenly father is so happy you come back. He doesn't mind that we have the smell of sin all over us. He doesn't mind that we are so sinful. We are so unworthy. God doesn't mind because He loves us so much and He has paid for our sins, so we want us to come to Him. So tonight we'll look at some Bible verses and think about the love of God and think about how much He loves us and so that we are open to the love of God. Are you open to the love of God? Yes. Do you want yes. the love of yes. God? How many of you have experienced the love of God before? How many yeah. of you? Wow. Almost everyone has experienced the love of God. But do you want more of the love of God? Yes. yes. Do we hunger for the love of God? You know, you might say, well, God loves the whole world. God loved, for God so loved the world, He already loved the world. Why want more of His love? No, you know that the Bible said that for high as the heaven is above the earth, so great is His love to those who fear Him. God's love is there always, but people don't experience that love. But people who fear Him and love Him and want God, and then you can experience God's love more. There are people on the street who don't believe in Jesus. God loves them, but they never experience the love of God, except they experience the love of God in the food, the eat, the rain, the, the love of the parents, the love of the people around them, they experience that. That's also from God's love. But they don't experience that Pentecostal love of God, that experience being filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the love of God. And some people didn't understand the Pentecostal experience. They thought it just people going crazy. I asked people, I asked someone before, a number of people, and a couple of them gave me an answer like that. Well, experiencing the infilling of the Holy Spirit is falling down. I said, that's not it. <laughs> falling down is not experiencing the Holy Spirit. Experiencing the Holy Spirit is experiencing the presence of God, coming very close to God, experiencing the, the love of God, the presence of God, being with God, experiencing the transformation of God. It's not falling down. Falling down is only the physical manifestation because of how God comes upon us. But what we want is not just falling down. But some people always think of, should I fall down or should I not fall down? And then they lose the concentration on Jesus. But we think about Jesus. Even now when we are reading the Word of God, we're hearing the Word of God, we say, Lord Jesus, I want more of you. You know, when I listen to sermons, I don't just sit there. Whenever, whatever the, the, the pastor says, I would listen, if he says, God loves me, and I say, yes, God loves me. And he say, pray to God, I say, yes, pray to God. Everything he says, I would do it instantly with my spirit to God. And then you really get the benefit of the sermon. Okay, let's look at Isaiah 49, verses 15 to 16. And I hope this word of God really stick in our mind all day long, all the days of our life. And if you have NIV, you can read with me. Isaiah 49, verses 15 to 16. 
And I hope this love of God will come upon you that you experience this love of God. Okay, you probably have heard of this verse before. Let's read that if you have NIV. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget it, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? I've seen many mothers, you know, one time I remember very clearly when I was in a hospital in Hong Kong. It was in a children section. And there were children there and there were babies there. And I saw a mother holding a baby inside a room. So the baby was hospitalized and the mother stayed with the baby. And what I saw was the baby was sleeping. Motionless, she was, the baby was sleeping. But the mother looked at the baby with love and with a smile. Has someone looked at you and you are sleeping with a smile? <laughs> <laughs> you haven't experienced that much, right? Except from your mom, that you didn't know that she might have done that. <laughs> if you have a lover or a wife who do that, look at you and smile while you're sleeping, you are very, very fortunate. <laughs> And I saw that mother looking at the baby and not moving at all, just staring at the baby and smiling. And the face showed total satisfaction. You know, that is how much God loves us. God never forgets you. You might say, well, I had my bad days. I did all those bad things. I did, you know, maybe... Some of us have taken drugs or alcohol and ruined our life and, and uh, we lose, lost our job and we said, I failed so much. I have not loved God with all my heart and I have even forsaken God. But God doesn't forgive you. And God has put that in my heart too. Many people I, I help to bring them to Jesus and I help to help them to experience the Holy Spirit. God just put that in my mind. Stick that in my mind. So for... Some of you experience the Holy Spirit. I, my mind always remember you. And I always say, where is that person? How is that person's relationship with God? God has put that love in my heart. People I have brought to Christ or people I try to bring to Christ, I keep remembering them because God has put that love in me. And God has a love toward you. It's much, much stronger than my love because I cannot love as strong as God far as the heaven is above the earth, my love is not that strong. But God has that unlimited love for each one of us and He remembers us even when we fail. <coughs> and if you love God, you follow God, God would never forget you. Of course, He would not, he would not forget even a common person. But if you love God, He really would set a plan for you. He would have a wonderful plan in your life. So. That's what I do. When I pray, I don't have to say, God, come to me, come, come to me, come to me. I know God already remember me. He remember me more than I remember him. I remember God as much as I can, even when I'm driving. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, God. But I'm anywhere, when I go to the restroom and I wake up in the middle of the night, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Whenever I do that, I feel the joy of the Lord. And it's rewarding. You know, the Pentecostal experience is really great because I can really enjoy God. Prayer becomes not a burden to me. I've seen people praying. Actually, I went to prayer meeting. And it seems like it's, wow, saying so many things. It seems like very heavy. I don't feel the joy. 